Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for joining me on my back porch. And uh, it is a lovely, lovely Sunday afternoon in Harlingen. And tomorrow we celebrate Labor's Day. Did you know that America is the only nation in the world that celebrates work by taking a day off? And that's what we do. Uh, the first Monday every September is sort of the unofficial or official uh, whichever it may be, end of summer and the beginning of our fall season. And of course, people are taking that last little bit of vacation to enjoy themselves. Kids are back in school and families are back at work and the regular fall and spring routines begin to take place as we head toward the holidays of the fall, uh, the activities of the fall, and then the Christmas break and then break into a new year. It's hard to imagine 2023 is that far gone, but it actually is. And, and so the idea of work and the concept of work is a biblical concept. In fact, there were people in Paul's day and they were waiting for the second coming of Jesus. And like a whole lot of people in church today, they think, well, the rapture is near. I'm just gonna sit and wait and not do anything. And yet that's not our perspective. That's not what we're to do biblically. And so Paul said of those people, if they don't work, they don't eat. And obviously, help was provided for people who had need, who were deserving. But if somebody was just lazy, didn't want to work, wanted to hang out under a bridge, beg, something like that, Paul said if they don't work, they don't eat. So work is valued in Scripture. But there's more than just a physical provide provisions for your table thing to this thing called work. Uh, I know that many of us uh, have in the past had to deal with what we've called workaholism, where we just work 24-7. Our mind never shuts down. Our bodies never shuts down. And we are constantly on the go. Some people are like that because of the work that they're involved in. There's no choice. I, a, a farmer has to harvest the grain when it's ripe or you lose the harvest. And there's a great spiritual principle there. If you don't get the harvest when it's ripe, you lose the harvest. And I think that's what Jesus had in mind in John chapter nine. There was a man that was brought to him and uh, Jesus healed the man and the people looked at him because they had the belief that if someone was ill, if someone had a physical problem, it was because of their sin or their parents' sin. It was almost in embryo what we call the prosperity doctrine today, only rather than if you have enough faith, God will do X, Y, and Z. This was, if you sin, God's going to do X, Y, and Z to you. And so they asked the disciples in John chapter nine, the first few verses, they said, who sinned, this man or his parents? Jesus made an astounding statement that sometimes in our translation of our English Bibles, we forget that in the Greek text of the New Testament, there was no punctuation, there was no um, spaces between sentences. It was totally different. It was just written in one document, line after line after line, and interpreters and translators had to come along later and put in punctuation marks, periods, commas, etc. And uh, thus we have in some of our more um, reader-friendly versions that are smaller sentences they're translated intentionally on a lower grade level with simple sentences rather than complex sentences in those translations you may not quite see it and you certainly do not see it in some of the older translations that just drag on and on and on with the sentence structure and yet may not have the right punctuation so what is the right punctuation of those verses and I'll tell you, I believe it's this. If you'll permit me to put on my glasses and put up with the reflection of the sunlight, uh, in John chapter 9, uh, Jesus is with the disciples. And verse 1 says, As he went along, he saw a man born blind from birth. His disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? In other words, they believed that there was a cause and effect. He sinned and God gave him blindness as a result of his sin. But here was the words of Jesus. He said, neither this man nor his parents sinned, comma, said Jesus. But this happened so that the work of God might be displayed in his life. As long as it is day, we must do the work of him who sent me. Night is coming when no one can work. While I am in the world, 
I am the light of the world. In one of my old college classes, I had a very godly professor, and I've adopted his interpretation of this verse. I don't think Jesus answered that question. I believe the correct interpretation is John chapter 9, verse 3, when they asked the question, who sinned, the parents or this man, that he was born blind? And Jesus said, neither, period. Neither sinned, this man nor his parents. And then he goes on to start a new sin, and he says, but, in other words, in contrast to this, this happened so the work of God might be displayed in his life, period. Why do bad things happen to good people? Very often in the economy of God, which I do not pretend to understand all of it, God is working a purpose, and he may not cause those bad things, but he works in them. In fact, two Sundays from this day, I will be preaching on Romans 8, 28 at Calvary Baptist Church. I hope if you're in the area, you'll come. But here in this passage, Jesus is saying, neither. In other words, don't get hung up on why. Here's what you get hung up and give your life to. How do we bring purpose out of it? And he said, but that the work of God might be displayed in him. In other words, every one of us, regardless of who we are, as we celebrate Labor Day by resting, God is at work, working in and through our lives, and he wants to use us. Is it wrong for us to rest? Of course not. Jesus told the disciples to come apart for a while. Vance Habner said, if you don't come apart, you'll come apart. Our bodies, our minds, our spirits, everything needs rest. So it's not wrong to take that time and rest. But what Jesus is talking about here is we have a season of opportunity. This is our day. Whether you're 70 some years old, whether you're 17 years old, we are alive today and this is our day to take what God has given us and allow him to use us for his honor and for his glory. Here's a man born blind. The work of God in his life was a healing. The work of God in your life may be something else. There are doctors that try to practice medicine and affect healing every day in people. That's the work of God in their life. And if they're believers, God gets glory out of that. So here, Jesus says, as long as it is day, in other words, while we have opportunity, we must do the work of him who sent me. God the Father sent Jesus the Son to come into this world and show us what he's like. The scripture says, when Jesus answered Philip's question, when Philip said, just show us the Father, Jesus said, Philip, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. And so the Father sent himself in the person of Jesus, God in flesh, incarnate. That's why the virgin birth is so important. Jesus is God in flesh, God incarnate. And he came to do the works of God while it was day because there was a time when Jesus was crucified and Jesus was placed on the cross. And on that cross, he bore atonement for our sins. He bore our sins and shed his blood that we might receive forgiveness. He was buried and raised the third day and hallelujah, he's alive today. And here's what he says about that. He said, we must do the work of him who sent me. Night is coming when no man can work. While I am in the world, I am the light of the world. And brothers and sisters who know Jesus, are you aware that in Matthew chapter five, and in Matthew chapter 5, verse 13, we are told that we are the salt of the earth. And we are told in verse 14 that we are the light of the world. People see Jesus through us. Yes, in some parts of the world, he reveals himself through dreams and visions. But primarily in our Western world, in our intellectual world, he reveals himself through his word and through the lives of his people who have trusted him and who followed him. So I'm saying to us today, on this Labor Day, in which we rest from our physical labors, and rightly so, let's be about the Father's business and do the work of him who sent us because night is coming when none of us can work. God bless you. Have a wonderful, wonderful holiday in the Lord Jesus Christ.